Hey everyone. In today's video, we're diving into configuring Authentic with Docker Compose and using traffic as a reverse proxy. Authelia is a powerful open source authentication and authorization server offering multi-factor authentication as well as single sign-on uh, to secure your, your web applications. Authelia is simple and easy to configure. It's not as intensive as Authentic, I'll say that. And now it's officially, you know, OpenID certified. There's no better time to walk through the setup process. And like I said before, we'll also be integrating traffic, a dynamic reverse proxy that simplifies routing and secure connections. So without further ado, let's get started. All right, so let's start off with the compose.yaml file. So as you can see, I'm using the latest version of the Athelia image. And since I'm using traffic, I'll place Authelia within my traffic network. Looking at the environment configuration, Authelia uses a few different keys to encrypt and protect sensitive data. And instead of hard coding these secrets into our compose.yaml file, we're going to store them in files and reference them securely. So first you have the JWT secret file, which is used for verifying password reset requests. You also have the session secret file, which encrypts and sign user sessions, ensuring login data remains, you know, relatively safe and tamper proof. And then you have the storage encryption key file, which just keeps your sensitive user data encrypted within the Athelia's database. And I'll go over how to create those secret files next. Looking at volumes, we're mapping the config and secret files or directories on the host to the config and secret directories inside the container. And we can create those directories now. So let's go ahead and do that. Now we can run the following command to create the JWT secret first. Uh, just in keep in mind that all the commands I'm running will be available within my GitHub repository. So make sure you run this command within the root directory of Athelia. Looking at the command is generating a random character key and placing it within the secrets directory. And then you'll do the same for both the secret and storage encryption key as well. So now that we have the secrets created, we can move on to the configuration.yaml file. First thing you want to do is you want to cd into the config directory and you want to create the following files, configuration.yaml as well as users.yaml. Starting with the configuration.yaml file, this file is used to define core settings for authentication, security, and access control. It also serves as the main configuration file for where you can specify some parameters. Looking at the one I have here, I have my server configurations, which specifies what port Athelia will listen on, 9091, as well as enabling debugging, logging, as well as the dark theme. For the authentication backend, this is where you set the parameters for how users are configured. I specify the users.yaml file to store user credentials and permissions and use an argon2 as the password hashing. Moving on to access controls. This defines the access control policies for each service that are protected behind Mothelia. So I have my default policy to deny. So if a service doesn't have a rule configure with the ones below, but it sits behind Mothelia, it will deny access to the service. And then if you look at the rules that I have set up, I have two that are currently set up for vault warding as well as photo prism. You can also specify whether you want one factor or two factor authentication for the services, but you can also put bypass here as well. For session, you can specify how long you want the session to last for, and this is by seconds. You can also configure some security measures to prevent brute force attacks. Here is set so that you can try to authenticate three times within two minutes before it bans you, lock you out for 300 seconds, four or five minutes. And I believe this is an IP space banning as well. For storage, you can configure Athelia to use an external database such as Postgres. But for my setup in my self-hosted environment, SQLite 3 works just fine for me. Lastly, for Notifier, if you need to get a one-time password sent to you via email, you can set it, set it up for SMTP. 
If you don't have SMTP set up, you can specify Thilia to use a file system instead, and it'll just update the file notification dot text with the OTP. And I'll show you what that looks like here soon. Moving on to the users.yaml file. This is a file where you can configure users for Thilia. As you can see here, I have one user set up, the administrator, and then the password hash can be generated using the following command here. So this command runs the Athelia container temporarily to uh, generate a password hash using Athelia's built-in cryptography tools. Once you run this command, you'll just copy the, the digest and paste it where the password is. So here is the digest. I'm going to copy this command. This also is setting the password as password123. This is where you would write whatever password you want. I'm going to open the users.yaml file, and I'm going to paste the digest where, where it says password. Then I'll save and exit. Before we start the container, I also want to go over my traffic configuration. So if you watched my previous traffic video, you know that I do not use labels, so everything is configured under the config.yaml file for traffic. So looking at the router configuration for Athelia, not really going to explain this piece. Uh, please watch my traffic video for detailed explanation on how traffic works. However, I will explain the middlewares configuration for Athelia. So here is the Athelia middlewares configuration. It was pulled straight from the official documentation. The only thing that was changed here was the verify link at the end. It points to my host that I have configured for Athelia above. Everything else is standard. So for any service that you want to place behind Athelia, you'll just add the Athelia middlewares to their router configuration. So the name of this middleware is just Athelia. And if you look up at my configuration for Vault Warden as well as Photo Prism, I have under middleware is Athelia right here. So now that we have our secrets created and configured, as well as our configuration.yaml file configured, as well as users.yaml configured, we can go ahead and start the container. And now that it's up and running, let's go ahead and look at the main web UI page. So the first thing you'll want to do is log in with the admin user that you created. In this case, for me, it'll be Jenny AJ and the password, password123. Once logged in, it wants us to register a device for two-factor authentication. So you'll go, I'll go ahead and do that for this setup. I'll use Vault Warden as my passkey. You can use your phone or YubiKey or whatever you want for this setup. So I'll click on register device and then the web opt-in credentials. So it sent me a one-time passcode. So if you go back to the config directory, you'll see a new file has been created, the notification.txt file. And this is where the code is. So you, I'll just cat that and get the code now. And you'll need to use sudo for this as well. So as you can see, here is the code. I will copy that. And then I'll paste it. And click verify. So now I can enter in a description. I'll just say Vault Warden and click Next. And here I can just add Othelia to my Vault Warden instance. And that's pretty much it in terms of what to configure. The Othelia web UI is really bare bones, uh, but that's, that's, pretty, that's OK. We have what we need, so let's go ahead and test it out. So first, I'll log out, and then I'll try to access Vault Warden. So now I'll try to access Vault Warden, which I configure for two-factor authentication. And I'll just log in with my Thilia credentials. And then it's asking me for a security key, so I'll go ahead and present that. And then as you can see, I'm now logged in. And there you have it, Othelia. So I find Othelia to be much easier to configure than some of the other identity providers, like I said earlier, like Authentic. 
Um, if you found this video helpful, please make sure you hit the like button and subscribe for more tech tips and tutorials. If you have any questions or you want to share your own experience, please drop a comment below. I'd like to hear from you. Thanks for watching. Until next time.